Welcome to this week's video and we're going to begin with the familiar story of the Emmaus Road. Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it's, it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Now one of the prevailing moods in our world at present is that of disarray and loss, there's fear and anxiety about the economy. Many are journeying through unexpected bereavement. Some are struggling with the way that governments have imposed such severe restrictions on personal freedom. Although perhaps for some of us more introverted people, it can feel like a gift. Churches are struggling with how to minister. How do you do a video service? What does it feel like to preach when you're only preaching to a camera, not to people? Can you do online communion, and if so, how? Incidentally, the Methodist Church of Great Britain forbids it. What about the digitally excluded, those who either cannot afford or choose not to have internet-enabled technology? Isn't it fitting, then, to come to the reading about Cleopas and his unnamed companion on the road to Emmaus and note the sense of disarray and loss that they are experiencing. The hopes they had placed in Jesus have been dashed by his crucifixion. What will the future look like now? Is there any hope for their future? Jesus does three things in this story that progressively lead the Emmaus to, if I can call them that, to finding joy and hope instead of despair. 
Those three things can help us too. Firstly, Jesus listens. He asks Cleopas and his companion about the events in Jerusalem that have distressed them. Now, of course, there's irony and not a little humour in the fact that Jesus is playing along with them here. It cannot truly be said that he doesn't know what has happened, can it? But he gets them to open up their thoughts and feelings and, like a pastor, he listens. Now, you may think that when Cleopas and his friend pour out their litany of crushed hopes and despair that this is unworthy of them. Surely they should be people of faith. Well, Jesus will address that. But initially he listens. And even though the unbelief that comes out may be painful, he's big enough to cope with it. And the good news is that Jesus is big enough to cope with us, bringing to him our pain, sorrow, and questions. The Psalms are full of people writing hymns of lament to God. Don't forget we have the book of Job in the Bible, where the best thing Job's comforters did for him was what they did when they first arrived. They stayed silent at that point. And the way we know Jesus is big enough to absorb all this is that we just have to look back to Good Friday and see him stretch wide his arms in love on the cross. Jesus may not justify our lack of faith, but he is the best and the safest person to whom we can bring it. So don't be afraid to express your troubles over the coronavirus pandemic or anything else to him. By all means, talk to others as well but make sure you tell him too. Secondly, Jesus interprets the scriptures. Yes, Jesus tells Peter, Pass and Co. that they've been too slow to believe the prophetic hope in the scriptures. Many Bibles, like the version I read from, say in verse 27 that Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. But a better translation than explained is interpreted. Jesus interpreted the scriptures in the light of himself because he was the fulfillment of the prophetic hope. He was the fulfillment of Israel's hope. I don't believe he just shot a few proof text verses at them. I believe he showed them how the whole grand narrative of God's dealings with Israel and with the world came to a climax in him. A New Testament scholar called Ian Paul puts it like this. The scriptures make sense of Jesus, but Jesus is also the only way to make sense of the scriptures. I remember how Bishop Festo Kivendure, the courageous Christian leader who stood up to the tyrant Idi Amin in Uganda in the 1970s, told a story of how he was given a few minutes with some of Amin's prisoners before they would be publicly executed in a football stadium. He wondered what on earth he could say that would make sense to these men imminently facing such a fate. As he did, he felt he heard the voice of Jesus speaking to him, saying, tell them about me, I'll make sense. So can Jesus, who is the climax of the scriptures, help us in our disarray over COVID-19? Surely, the Jesus who was born into the pain and mess of this world can. The Jesus who came to deal with the groaning of creation can. The Jesus who said that natural disasters were not necessarily a judgment from God, but still a warning to repent can. The Jesus who died an unjust death at a relatively young age can. And the Jesus who rose from the dead 
as the first fruits of God's new creation. He can. Thirdly, Jesus breaks bread. When I was a young local preacher, I remember preaching on this passage and latching on to the thought that Jesus was revealed to Cleopas and his companion when he broke the bread. I took that then as a sign of us meeting Jesus in the breaking of the bread at Holy Communion. And of course the old hymn, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread, But Do Not Then Depart, makes that assumption too. But although Jesus does the same four things with the bread here that he does at the Last Supper, he takes, gives thanks, breaks and gives the bread, that doesn't necessarily mean that this points forward to the church's celebration of the sacrament. For those four actions were performed by Jews at ordinary meals as well. What we have here is a revelation of Jesus when he breaks bread. And there's one other occasion in Luke's Gospel where that happens soon after Jesus breaks bread. It's the feeding of the 5,000. Because right after that, Peter confesses that Jesus is God's Messiah. So now, the Emmaus too know that Jesus is truly risen from the dead and that this changes everything. They see him for who he is, for what has happened and what God has done. This gives them the energy to return to what has been the place of confusion and despair, Jerusalem. Only now, the resurrection of Jesus casts everything in a new light. And it does the same for us. The coronavirus has exposed our fear of death. Now, I'm not suggesting that Christians think in the words of that popular piece at funerals that death is nothing at all. I don't believe that. The Bible calls death the last enemy. But the end of this old creation in death leads us to wait for the making of all things new in God's new creation through resurrection. And that's why we can even face this enemy and all sorts of disarray and loss with hope. Let us pray. God our Father, help us to bring our confusion or loss of hope or disarray to you through your Son Jesus, whether it's about the current pandemic or other troubles. Help us to bring the sorrows of others to you too. And whether we understand or not, help us to see that in Jesus things do make sense or will make sense. And fill us with hope in believing in the resurrection and looking forward to our own and your great new creation. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Finally, the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you everyone. See you soon. And if you want to stay up to date with these videos, as I try and remind people each week, please hit the subscribe button below this and then the bell icon and you'll receive notifications as soon as new videos are posted. See you soon. Bye-bye.